Greetings and salutations friends and welcome back to yet more Warhammer 40k lore. Today we are going to have a look at some orcs, more specifically Tusker, the demon killer. Ah, orcs. I do love me orcsies. I do need to cover some more orcs, although I also need to cover the Eldar, still haven't done any aspect warriors. I also need to cover some of the various casts of the Tau, etc, etc, etc. So many topics, so few Fridays in the year. But for today, it will be Tusker. Now, Tusker is one of those funny characters. This is one of the reasons why people in some occasions say that 40k is just silly. Because orcs, and orcs are silly, because, well, again, orcs. Now, Tusker was an orc's orc. He liked fighting stuff that was larger than him, and preferably more violent than him, because his strategy for becoming an even bigger orc was, of course, to fight larger things. This being relatively basic logic for an orc, at the very least. And you certainly can't deny that if you manage to fight something that is bigger, stronger, and more violent than you, and yet somehow still manage to come out on top, your fighting skills must surely have improved. So, there is certainly some basis to it, and of course the fact that orcs literally do grow off adrenaline also do help, and thereby, bigger enemies, bigger growth spurts. Tusker was already a fair-sized orc warboss, but nothing particularly special. He certainly was no beast, and he certainly was no Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka, but decent sized anyways, and you know what they say, it's not the size of the boat, it's the motion of the ocean. Oh god, I just heard myself of that, I'm so sorry. But it is an orc video, and I can't make an orc video without at least one or two stabs at the fact that orcs simply do not have genitalia in it. In fact, I do believe I am contractually obliged to do so by the fantastical, imaginative agency that I work for. Reasons. So with the question of sheer size out of the way, how did Tusker become famous, and how did he come about his nickname Demon Killer? Well, one fine evening, Tusker and his crew were cruising through the warp on their ship Gorjaw when they had visitors. Orc Gellerfield technology is unreliable at the best of times, and in most cases, the orcs view this lack of, uh, well, reliable technology as a way of getting in a little bit of practice fighting in between destinations. But occasionally, orc killer fields fail spectacularly, and let something particularly large and naughty through. This is precisely what happened on the Gorjaw this particular evening, when a horde of particularly vicious demons managed to get onto the ship, and one remarkably large demon made its way onto the Gorjaw's bridge, where it proceeded to butcher every single fucking crew member it could get its multiple tentacles on. In most cases, this would naturally be cause for alarm, horror, screaming, and general running away and shitting of pants. However, this is an orc ship, which means that instead of screaming and trying to bury their heads in the deck plating, the orcs were overjoyed and most of them made best time possible towards the loudest source of screaming that was within earshot. In the case of Tusker, the greatest amount of carnage and screaming he could locate due to the advantage of having access to the Vox network, was the bridge, which was currently having a vital proper party, at least in orc terms, and so Tusker needed to get in on the good stuff, and headed to the bridge as fast as his little orc legs could catch him, pausing only briefly to strap on his big old cybernetic claw. And it's a lucky thing that he took the time to do that, because when he got onto the bridge, he was met by a rather monstrous creation, who had just about finished murdering the entirety of the bridge crew, and had started to eat whatever remained. E.g. licking the goo off the walls. As far as Tusker was concerned, though, this simply meant that he didn't have any competitors trying to steal any of his glory, and so he threw himself at the gigantic demon, in true orcish fashion. What followed was a rather magnificent melee, where both parties took some serious pounding, but Tusker managed to just come out on top after having liberated the demon's horns from its head, and then used said horns to stab it to death. A lengthy and arduous process, no doubt, but Tusker was a very determined orc, and eventually, after having been encouraged by repeated stabbings and bludgeonings, 
the demon had to relinquish its grasp on its rather temporary life and return into the warp from whence it was spawned. From this, Tusca learned two things. One, demons are fucking awesome at fighting, and two, they are filled with spiky bits that make excellent trophies. And or improvised weaponry, depending on the particular situation. He was, however, faced with a bit of a conundrum when it comes to finding more of these lovely creatures to bash over the head with their own body parts, namely the simple fact that demons are quite rare creatures, and they don't have any real home planets that he could invade. Or, well, they do, but those home planets are located in a rather hostile environment. But... Tusker, as I mentioned earlier, is a remarkably dedicated and goal-driven orc, and as such it didn't really matter how hostile the environment was, he had to find himself more demons, and simply just trawling around the warp with the Gellerfields down simply wasn't attracting enough of them. Strangely enough, the various warp predators had learned to ignore the giant boat filled with batshit insane green skin that used their kin as bludgeoning tools, and so some other way of fishing would have to be invented. And like any aspiring fisherman, Tusker realised that the first step towards getting bigger and better fish, or in this case, monstrosities made out of tentacles, teeth, and vaginas with teeth, is to get better bait. And what do demons love to munch on the most? Well, humans come a fairly close second, but sadly, those are also some fairly elusive beings that tend to run away and or die before you can really use them as bait. So he'd have to resort to the orcish version, weird boys. Now, granted, they weren't capable of quite the same level of good old-fashioned fear, always a valued spice amongst demon kin, but they were remarkably psychically unpredictable. Which means that they glow like a nuclear-powered lighthouse in the warp, thereby attracting all of the lovely creatures that Tusca wants to bash over the head. And for a while, this did indeed attract the kind of catch that he wanted, but once again, unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough. He never managed to attract the properly big ones that he had met that first time aboard the Gorjo, and so he had to go with his emergency solution. If the demons wouldn't come to him, Tusca would have to go to the demons. And he knew of just the place where the demons tended to congregate, namely the Eye of Terror. Now, the Imperium has on several occasions done some quote-unquote invasions of the Eye of Terror, usually when they have a large number of people they wish to punish and they just essentially want to go like, well, we can't shoot all of them because that'd be bothersome, we can't keep them in prison because some of the people we want to punish are space marines and they're fairly strong and would probably just break out, so let's just throw them at the Eye of Terror because the odds of them coming out of that are fairly small after all. Like I said, Invasions, quote-unquote. But none of them had ever been very successful, again. These were primarily just to get rid of people that the Imperium was no longer particularly fond of, and so they weren't really set up for success. But, again, it was worth a try. I mean, they might delay the next Black Crusade. Although, again, time doesn't flow within the Eye of Terror like it does outside of it, so in all due likelihood it didn't actually have any fucking effect whatsoever. But oh well, it was worth a shot. Tusker, however, had no such interest. Tusca was not concerned with delaying any large crusades. Tusca was only concerned with finding the largest quantity of horned demons for him to bash over the head with what may or may not be their family members. So, having decided on a final destination, there was only one incy beansy problem to get around. Namely, the fact that the Imperium have over the years gotten quite wary of the Eye of Terror, and have decided to fortify the place rather extensively. Tosca would have to find some way of getting past said fortifications and into the Eye of Terror. Luckily for Tosca, the Imperium never really imagined that any foreign race would try to break into the Eye of Terror, and so their protocols for such an event were somewhat lacking. And honestly, can you really blame them? I mean, what Imperial tactician is sitting around the Eye of Terror going like, well, I know there's these Black Crusades popping up every now and so often, and we should probably prepare for that, but I think we should take the time to prepare for the possibility that a bunch of orcs might try to break through our cordon and into the Eye? You know, it sounds fairly ludicrous when you put it like that. But that is precisely what Tusker did. 
He gave the Cadian High Command one fuck of a fright while doing so, because the last thing that Cadio wanted was an infestation of fucking greenskins. The thing with orcs is, once they've landed on a planet, they are remarkably hard to get off the planet. They tend to congregate in the most hostile environments imaginable, which in and of itself makes it pretty hard to murderize all of them, and they also reproduce via spores, which essentially means that if you want to wipe out an orc population, you have got to burn pretty much the entire area that might house an orc population. Armageddon, after several orc invasions, is still haunted by large numbers of feral orcs living out in the jungle. Now, these orcs have long since degenerated into a feral state, but killing them all off is virtually impossible, because, well, the only real way of getting rid of them is to literally burn the entirety of the jungle, and that's not really a feasible option at the moment. Luckily, Cadia doesn't have massive, continent-spanning jungles, so they're lucky there, but if there is one thing Cadia is not lacking, it's hostile environments for the orcs to hide in. Granted, practically all of said hostile environment is located in between Cadian fortress cities and is being routinely bombed just for training purposes pretty much every fucking day, but that rarely bothers the orcs all that much. After all, a little bit of random and light shelling has never hurt anyone. But as already mentioned, Katie was of course not Tusker's primary goal, although he did have a quick stop on the planet Prozan, or, well, planet, the moon Prozan. Prozan is essentially a really shitty place that the Cadians use to train people in extreme environments. It is a remarkably bad place to be, which means that to the Orcs, it was the closest thing to home they had seen in a very long time, so they had to give it a little bit of a visit. Much to the uh, chagrin of the local Cadian Defense Force, who had to actually hold off the fuckers, and would eventually have been overrun if it weren't for the fact that Tusker had places to be, and he was in a hurry. So, after a quick warm-up round with the Cadian Defense Force, he wandered off over to the Eye of Terror, and again, the Imperial Navy decided to pretty much just let him fucking go. I mean, <laughs> why stop him? He's heading directly towards the Eye of Terror. I mean, come on, worst case scenario, he goes in there, gets butchered. Best case scenario, he goes in there, gets butchered, and kills a bunch of demons and Chaos Worship is doing it. As far as the Imperium was concerned, this was pretty much a win-win scenario. Luckily for Tusker, it was pretty much a win-win scenario for him as well. He got to have a little bit of warm-up on the Cadian's expense, and now he was headed into the Eye of Terror to find himself some more spiky creatures to beat over the head repeatedly, preferably with their own body parts, if at all possible. And so, you might think that the story ends there. After all, Tusker just wandered into the Eye of Terror, a remarkably hostile part of the galaxy. However, at this point in time, Tusker and his lads had gotten remarkably good at killing demons, considering that's pretty much all they've been doing for the last god knows how many fucking years upon years upon years. So, eventually, they probably started to figure out where to stab the demons to make them stop stabbing back. Or at least that is the working theory. Plus, Tusker did bring along a large number of Veard Boys, and while Veard Boys does have that peculiar habit of attracting demons by being, well, psychers, they are also quite effective at fighting against demons, seeing as they can use their own powers against them, the powers of the warp and the immaterium. It's a hell of a lot easier to banish a demon using its own powers than banishing it simply by bashing its skull in repeatedly with a blunt metal object. Although the latter part is undeniably far more entertaining. This peculiar mix of psychic potency and experience at fighting demons allowed Tusker to do quite a bit of damage in the Eye of Terror. Now, granted, before Imperial Crusades into the Eye of Terror have also destroyed several worlds, or, well, destroyed being a fairly operative world here, essentially they cyclonic torpedoed the shit out of it and then carried on, which doesn't actually have all that much of an effect upon the Eye of Terror because, well, it is entirely up to the whims of the gods how many planets there are inside of the Eye of Terror. So literally, Korn could just snap his fingers and voila, there's a new planet, so, you know, limited success, but hey. Tusker and his boys, however, had very different plans indeed. After all, just bombarding a plan from orbit is, first of all, cowardly, 
and secondly, fucking boring. And as such, Tosca and his chosen lads descended onto the planets below, and actually managed to pretty much conquer several planets, or well, conquer, violently ravage and then move on when they ran out of opposition is perhaps a better way of putting it. And unlike the previous human crusades, the orcs had one considerable advantage. Whereas humans that landed on a planet filled with Slaneshi demons would probably be driven insane by, well, Slaneshi demons rampaging through fields made out of penises and trees made out of giant vaginas that bleed fruits of... I don't even want to fucking think about it. And thereby you would lose a fair bit of your combat potential by simply people going, well, bonkers. Orcs don't have to worry about this. An orc will not stop and wonder about the environment going like, ooh, that's pretty scary, isn't it? No. Orcs will simply just kill anything that they see nearby that they think might be worth killing. If it makes a loud screaming noise when it dies, for example, that would be pretty damn worth killing. And if it so happens that the trees and the grass also screams when you kill them, well, that just makes everything all that much better, doesn't it? Despite this mental advantage, however, conquering demon worlds, or, well, once again, ravaging demon worlds, is not an easy task. There tends to be a lot of demons on a demon world. Shocker, I know. And there tends to be a very, very large demon leading the demon world. Additionally, Chaos Space Marines also have a nasty tendency of inhabiting these worlds, and they can be some pretty damn tough cookies to crack. And so while Tosca and his WAG certainly was making progress, they were taking a fair bit of casualties doing so, until eventually they landed upon a peculiar planet. Now again, navigation inside of the Eye of Terror is problematic at the best of times, so the orcs weren't so much navigating as wandering around aimlessly until they hit upon something, then they landed upon that something in the hopes that there was something there they could kill. In this particular instance, it originally looked like the orcs were shit out of luck. There was absolutely nothing on the planet. No forests, no oceans, no civilizations, no buildings, no fucking nothing. What the orcs did notice, however, was that the ground was surprisingly squishy-wishy and tended to bleed when they beat it with their choppers and shot it with their shooters. Now, in frustration, Tusker figured that, well, if there's nothing around, maybe there's something below us, and ordered the rest of his boys to let loose into the ground with whatever they had at hand. Choppers, shooters, grenade launchers, whatever the fuck they had, they were supposed to use that on the ground. Now, normally this would be a somewhat insane order, but Tosca had at this point wandered through hordes of demons and were decked head to toe in various trophies, so none of his boys were stupid enough to argue the point that it's relatively retarded to fire into the ground in the hopes of spawning enemies. However, in this particular occasion, Tosca's strategy proved to be a brilliant strategy indeed. Because it turned out that pretty much the entire planet was one large chaotic organism. And now, since the large chaotic organism was under attack by a particularly nasty green virus, it produced its own version of human antibodies to prevent these little green fuckers from inflicting further damage upon it. In this case, the antibodies took the shape of legions of bloodletters, led by a particularly large and vicious demon known as the Blood Prince. Original, I know, but hey, it's corn. What does he expect? Pretty much everything he does is blood. Blood letters, blood crushers, blood hounds, and so, blood prince kinda makes sense in an unoriginal fashion. Desperate lack of naming sense aside, however, there were a lot of blood letters, and the blood prince himself was no pushover either, and the orcs. Well, they had been rather reduced in numbers after, you know, invading dozens of other demon worlds, belonging mostly to Korn's rivals, by the way. This'll be important later. And so the orcs, although they put up one hell of a fight, as orcs tend to do, they were eventually overwhelmed. The Blood Prince himself engaged Tusca in a duel to the death, and had, apparently, defeated Tusca. He had pinned him to the ever-bleeding ground, with a massive sword shoved straight through Tusker's gut. Now, if this was any other creature, such a wound would almost certainly have kept them down. However, this was an orc. And as it so happens, some of Tusker's pet psychers had managed to launch a psychic attack against the triumphant Blood Prince, distracting him just long enough for Tusker 
to add grievous injury to insult by reaching up with his trusty power claw and gently, ever so gently, grasping the Demon Prince's giant dongly nutsack in his claws, after which he proceeded to squeeze. And unfortunately for the Demon Prince, an adamantium nutsack was not one of the many gifts that Korn had bestowed upon him. After a rather unsightly and most definitively undemon prince like scream, the Demon Prince took vengeance by finally lopping off Tusker's head. Although Tusker himself was quite happy at this point because, well, this was one hell of a scrap. And it turned out that someone else agreed as well that this was indeed one hell of a scrap, and he'd like to see more of it. You see, Korn was keeping an eye on Tusker's progress. Up until this point, as I already mentioned, Tusker had mostly been rampaging through the worlds of Korn's rivals, which pleased him immeasurably. And now that he dumped down on one of Korn's own planets, and made such a wonderful showing of himself, Korn simply couldn't just let him die. And luckily, this being the Eye of Terror and all, Korn had more than enough influence over this particular piece of real space to make damn sure that Tusker would be allowed to continue tusking for a very long time indeed. He made it so that every morning Tusker and his orcs would rise from their graves, or, well, their rotting corpses, and continue to attack the inhabitants of the very, very unfortunate planet they had landed upon. Additionally, orcs produce spores when they die, which means more orcs, which means that every single day there were more orcs. This, as you can probably imagine, annoyed the Blood Prince to no end, but Korn found this to be fucking hilarious, and after he left the orcs on the planet for a couple dozen millennia to properly piss off his now less than favoured servant, he eventually granted the orcs the greatest favour that Korn can bestow. He took the orcs and transported them to his own world, where they now fight a never-ending campaign around Korn's brass citadel against his favoured generals, in a never-ending dance of death, massacre, bloodshed, and very, very angry orcs. This is as close to any orc has ever come to paradise, and Tusker is a very, very happy greenskin to this very day. So you could perhaps say that this is one of the very few truly happy endings in the 41st millennium, and that should tell you something. Until next time, I've been Arch, thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a good day.